thanks so much, Aram. Uh, Aram has asked me to say some general words about the need for human-derived systems, which are an important parallel to, to mouse models. Uh, as a relatively rare cancer, as well as an understudied cancer over the years, um, there really hasn't been a, a good set of uh, human systems, cell lines, that uh, allow us to model the human disease. And as you've seen from the complicated genetics uh, that's been presented by a number of speakers, we believe that multiple different uh, cell line models are needed to adequately represent this, this var variability. The other thing that I wanted to point out uh, is that, again, as a relatively rare cancer, community really matters in the attempts to generate resources such as uh, cell lines and, pa and patient-derived xenograft resources. And really, uh, uh, this work um, in part was facilitated by um, uh, Stacy and this foundation, where some of the collaborators who participated in, in this project so Katie, Alan, and, and John from UCSF. Uh, this, I should also say that uh, really this effort wouldn't have been possible without Shoup uh, from my lab, who has his own lab now at, at Fred Hutch. And finally, uh, from the very early days, um, the Target Cancer Foundation has been very supportive of these efforts. And I should say, most importantly, really the generosity of patients to participate in, this, in these type of efforts has been critical. Uh, it really uh, is essential that we have an adequate representation of different genetics uh, in, in human cell lines. Uh, so I'm just going to say some very brief um, comments now. Hopefully in future years, as we use this resource now that it's built and, and we share it with the community, we'll learn a lot about the heterogeneity of, of human uh, cholangiocarcinoma. And so um, these efforts involve working with surgeons where we can obtain biopsy specimens and resections. And I should say, again, a really key person at, at Mass General has been Lipica Goyal. And at this point now, we're able to get specimens from patients at different courses in their therapy to really understand how the disease evolves in a controlled setting. So it's very difficult to study scientifically how, how therapies uh, work in a patient, but having a parallel system of patient-derived material in the laboratory is really unparalleled in understanding and improving uh, therapeutics. So in brief, Tumor specimens are first implanted into mice that are immunodeficient, and then uh, these grow up as, as natural tumors, and then they're converted into either cell lines that's grown on, on, a, on a tissue culture dish, or a, a more refined system that uh, we're also working with, and many, many other groups are working with, which is three-dimensional cultures that perhaps more adequately restore, uh, um, uh, model the biology in, in patients. And then, of course, it's important to verify what you have in the end. Um, and these efforts have been going on for now, I think, about four or five years at Mass General. I know other people in the meeting also have these efforts, and hopefully we can uh, combine uh, forces going forward. Um, and now I can say that our, our team now has perhaps about 45 patient-derived xenografts uh, representing quite, I think, um, a, a good first pass of the different genetics of these patients. Uh, of patients with cholangiocarcinoma. And we're now in the process of really developing in vitro models from, from these PDXs. The next step, and, and this is ongoing currently, is to fully characterize these models in terms of their genetic features and other aspects of their biology. And again, the hope is that we'll be able to divide cholangiocarcinoma from one disease into a number of very distinct subsets based on the genetics, certainly, which we know about, but perhaps other features of the biology that can be uncovered in more controlled uh, laboratory circumstances. And then just some, for some practical uses of, of the availability and also the need, uh, this is just an example of a study from Mass General from a number of years ago where uh, uh, one of our collaborators asked across many cancer types, can um, selective vulnerability to, to various drugs be identified in subsets of any cancer type? using a very large range of, of drugs. And what was painfully evident here for, for us in this uh, research area was how underrepresented cholangiocarcinoma was in with these present studies. And Shoup now has, has completed some studies of this type with, with cholangiocarcinoma. And again, we hope to have this grow, both analyzing drug sensitivities across very large panels of cholangiocarcinomas, but also other genetic approaches to ask what fundamental cellular pathways are required for a cholangiocarcinoma to grow, depending on what mutations are present. And you're going to hear briefly um, some early work from uh, Lay uh, in my lab, who was fortunate to get a, a, a fellowship from, from uh, Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation. 
Um, and so finally, again, this is a slide from a number of years ago showing a number of different types of lung cancer where um, in lung cancer now there's a whole host of treatments that are dependent on the genetic and other biological features of the tumor. We're starting to see certainly opportunities like that in cholangiocarcinoma, but the availability of, of resources such as these um, cell line and organoid resources hopefully will lead us to have all uh, many new predicted uh, more targeted therapies that can be uh, rationally designed and, and before testing in patients. And again, I say that this is a, a community effort and with a well-characterized platform, we hope that many more people can join the uh, field of cholangiocarcinoma research. And so our, our efforts from our team in the next year will be really to fully characterize the models that we have, link them with clinical behavior of the tumors, and understand some of the drug sensitivities uh, and other pathways uh, that will, again, allow us to make predictions about subtypes and, and how they should be treated. And uh, again, I'm sure we're going to have lots of uh, updates uh, in the next year. So um, with that, uh, we thank you, and I think we're going to have a panel discussion uh, following.